Men fall behind in college enrollment. Women still play catch up at work. Let that uh, headline sink in. Men are leaving college and yet are still able to be more successful than women. Why is that? It's obviously because of misogynies. That's the only possible explanation. It can't be because you got a, a surge of women going to college and getting useless degrees or anything. Nothing to do with that. This is one of those rare women most affected stories where it actually makes sense. Women make bad decisions. Women most affected. Hey, wait a minute. That actually makes perfect sense, doesn't it? Women's are overrepresented in low-paying professions that require college credentials. And whose fault is that? You're the one that decided to get a degree in social work, in grievance studies, instead of in math, physics, something important like that? The pandemic, and actually specifically, the government-mandated lockdowns upended the lives of millions of college students. The Wall Street Journal reported this week that men have been hit particularly hard, accounting for roughly three-quarters of the uh, pandemic-driven dropouts, and depicted an accelerating crisis in male enrollment. It's cute how these guys still haven't caught on to the real issue. All these colleges have mandatory classes telling men how horrible they are. Why would they not want to sit through that, I wonder? A closer look at historical trends and the labor market reveals a more complex picture, one in which whammons keep playing catch-up in an economy structured to favor men. Really? You know what this is really revealing, though? Even being given every single handicap, they still can't compete. It's just sad. In many ways, the college gender imbalance is not new. Whammons have outnumbered men on campus since the late 1970s. The, the ratio of female to male undergraduates increased uh, much more from 1970 to 1980 than from 1980 to present, and the numbers haven't changed much in recent decades. In 1992, 55% of college students were whammons. By current year minus two, the number had nudged up to 57.4%. While the shift in the college gender ratio is often characterized as men falling behind, men are actually more likely to go to college today than they were when they were the majority many decades ago. Yeah, this is a symptom of college having to be for everyone. So they watered it down. College degrees are the new high school diploma. It's no longer something that exceptional people go to do. It's just something that's expected everyone does. Everyone is expected to go to college and get a diploma. In 1970, 32% of men aged 18 to 24 were enrolled in college, a level that was most likely inflated by the opportunity of being, oh, to avoid being drafted into the Vietnam War. That percentage dropped to 24% in 1978 and then steadily grew to a stable 37% to 39% over the last decade. The gender ratio mostly changed because female enrollment increased even faster, more than doubling over the last half century. So even now that women are the majority, it's like 60 to 40% now, there's still countless programs to help women go, go to college. Men aren't allowed to have anything similar, even though they're the minority. Because of the change in ratio, some selective colleges discriminate against women's in admissions to maintain a gender balance. Also, it's discrimination when, when you do it against women, but it was just affirmative action when doing it to men, huh? <laughs> I get it. As the journal reported, generally admission officials prefer to limit the disparity to 55% female and 45% male. Why not 50-50, bigots? Their reason not to let the gender ratio drift further towards 2 to 1 is straightforward. Such ratio would most likely cause a decrease in applications. They know. So going back to the previous women most affected stories I talked about, these women that get college degrees... They're not willing to, to date down, as they call it. Men? Men got no problem with that, usually. Women, though? Oh, if I'm making six figures, he better be making seven to be worthy of me. Meanwhile, the guys making seven figures are like, I'll take the 18-year-old supermodel over your crusty old ass. You, you ain't worth nearly as much as you think you are. Not even counting that. A large percentage of women who go to college... They go there with the intent of finding a husband. A large chunk of women who go to medical school, they don't even intend to finish. 
They don't intend to become a doctor or become a nurse. They might, but they're really only in it to to marry a future doctor, to hook them while they're young. In a New York Lies essay in current year minus 15 titled uh, To All the Girls I've Rejected, the dean of admissions at Kenyon College at the time explained, beyond the availability of dance partners for the winter formal, gender balance matters in ways both large and small on a residential college campus. Once you become uh, decidedly female in enrollment, fewer males, and as it turns out, fewer females find your campus attractive. Wow, is, is it because women are only going there to date or to find husbands? Interesting. No wonder they don't want to go to, to a uh, a tuna fest, huh? During the pandemic, many undergraduates struggled to make the grade. Some left school altogether, but according to the National Student Clearinghouse, the initial male-dominated pandemic enrollment shock was almost entirely confined to community colleges uh, that are open to all. Yeah, I think we covered that article, actually. In fact, the clearinghouse data shows that male enrollment in public and private nonprofit four-year colleges dropped more from current year minus three to minus two before the pandemic. Mm-hmm. R- right when the woke shit was starting to really get intolerable. Then from current year minus two to current year minus one. The raw numbers don't take into account the varying value of college degrees. Thank you. Finally, someone is talking about this. Men still dominate in fields like technology and engineering, which offer some of the highest salaries for recent grads. Perhaps not coincidentally, the professors in these fields remain overwhelmingly male. If women refuse to go into that, of course, this is going to happen. The women surge into college because they were able to, but also because many had to. There are still some good-paying jobs available to men without college credentials. There are relatively few for such women. What are you talking about? Women can do the Women and are the same as men, right? There's no difference between men and women. What's stopping women from becoming electricians? One of the previous articles when we, I think it was the one where NPR got red-pilled about college. They were following a 40-year-old woman who became an electrician and was making like 80000 a year. Nothing is stopping these women other than themselves. They have access to the same jobs the men do. And despite the considerable cost in time and money to earn a degree, many female-dominated jobs don't pay well. I wonder why. Maybe those jobs didn't need degrees after all, but academia just, you know, they they, they caused their own inflation, let's just say. They, they did this on purpose so they can get more money. It's all part of the scam. And women fell for it, hook, line, and sinker. Consider a woman's working as a cosmetologist who took out a student loan to earn a credential and complete the arduous process of getting an occupational license. Her husband in a male-dominated working-class field is more likely to have no degree at all. One way to see that couple is as an example of the greater likelihood of graduation among women's than men. Another way is to... Is, now, see, that couple, by the way, the likelihood of it existing is pretty low. Because w- what women's with a college degree would even consider dating a man without one? You know, another way is how our society requires women to spend, more, to spend more time and money than men to get a job, really. The female-to-male gender ratio is the highest in for-profit colleges, uh, which often overcharge students for worthless degrees. So women make terrible decisions, women most affected. Was anything stopping these women from becoming plumbers? Did they have to go get that grievance studies degree? Men are doing their research beforehand and deciding, yeah, I don't need college. Women just listen and believe. Oh, well, we're told you have to go to college if you want to be successful. So here I am. The fact that the male-female wage gap remains large after more than four decades in which women's unnumbered men in college strongly suggests that college alone offers a narrow view of opportunity. It's not opportunity. It's the willingness to take risks. It's making good choices in general. The women's often seem stuck in place as they overcome obstacles to use their degrees to move into male-dominated fields. The fields offer less pay in return. All right. Let's, uh, Let's think about this one. So as more women enter a specific field, that field tends to offer less pay. Why would this be? Now, Ignoring the obvious pot shot I could take here. Well, I'm not going to ignore it. I'm going to tell you what it is now. Well, maybe it's because the quality of the work is declining. 
No, let, let's just let's just pretend that doesn't happen. Ignoring the obvious pot shots I can take. The reason this happens, the reason fields start overall paying less money the more women enter them, it's simple economics. It's supply and demand. You now have twice as many people competing for the exact same amount of jobs. No fucking shit the pay is going to go down. The more people you have competing for the fewer jobs, the lower the pay is going to be. The exact opposite is true as well. That We're in a funny situation right now when there's actually more job openings than applicants. So they have to pay a lot more. When, when these job seekers have a lot more choices... They can be a lot more selective. So if you want to get them to pick you, you're going to have to sweeten the deal. It's the exact opposite of the situation we're talking about here, where they, they could get rid of you at the drop of a hat and replace you the next day. It's easy. Of course, of course, salary is going to go down. Anyone with a functioning brain can figure this out. None of this diminishes the significance of the male decrease in college enrollment and graduation. Indoctrinators view the male-driven drive in community college enrollment over the last 18 months as a calamity. The pandemic confirmed what was already known. Higher socioeconomic classes are deeply embedded in college and will bear considerable cost and inconvenience to stay there, even if it means watching lectures uh, on a laptop in the room uh, above your parents' garage and missing a season of parties and football games. No, you're you're missing the point. Like they see everything through their through their um intersectional lens. This this isn't the problem. The type of people that you vilify in college are going to be less likely to go and less likely to stay. That's all this is. Maybe if you stop treating men like shit, maybe if you actually give them some value for their money, they'll come back. For other people, college attendance is far more fragile. It does not define their identities and is not as important as earning a steady paycheck or starting and nurturing a family. In a time of crisis, it can be delayed. So completely coincidentally, did weren't more men dropping out of college than women, though? But the reality is that people who drop out of college are st statistically unlikely to complete a degree. I wouldn't bother these days. Like I, I will, I will beat this dead horse again. My recommendation to all of you listening, if you're still planning on what to do with your future, is this: figure out what it is you want to do before you go to college. Don't listen to your counselors; they're on the dole. If they tell you go to college and find out what you want to do in college, ignore everything else they tell you because they're fucking idiots and they should not be listened to. If you find yourself in college, it, it's probably going to be after you, you have a couple hundred thousand dollars in debt. Do you want that? Is that how you want to get started in life? Drowning in debt? No. Figure out what you want to do before you even apply to college. And once you figure out what it is you want to do, do your research and figure out if you even need a degree. If you want to be a doctor, well, you have no choice. You have to go to college. You have to go to medical school. But if it turns out what you want to do doesn't require a degree, don't waste all that time and money on a degree you don't even fucking need. You could just get a four-year head start in your job. Now, last year, women were less likely than men to leave community college despite their disproportionate responsibility for caregiving and domestic work. Yet, never mind men's disproportionate responsibility for providing for the family. A lot of the men that dropped out during the pandemic, they did it so they can help earn money or so, so they can cut that expense for their family. Yeah, because they no doubt understood the bleak long-term job prospects for women's without a credential. No one is stopping women from getting into the trades other than women themselves, you know. But about 200,000 fewer women were enrolled in community college last year nonetheless. If we're looking for a college enrollment crisis, that's a good place to start. <laughs> eh, keep, keep deflecting from the actual issues. We'll see where that gets you. As for me, I don't care. I'm done with it. I did go to college, full disclosure. 
but it didn't matter from the moment I got my first job in the field. Oh man, I am so excited to tell you guys right now that finally, after about a year of build-up and shilling, we have launched Blade Devil on Indiegogo, and so far it is doing so well thanks to awesome people like you. If you haven't backed it yet, then please check the links in the description and check out Blade Devil on Indiegogo. You will not be disappointed. Looking forward to seeing you there.